Well, welcome to this workshop. Um, thank you for being here today. My name's Lynn Van Tegum, and I'm here with my colleague, uh, Lynn Stanton. The two Lynns, they call us. I'm Lynn one, because I have one in, and she's Lynn two, with two ends. <laughs> we are two of the three co-founders of Emergency Prep Help, which is a nonprofit. We formed about three years ago with the mission to um, serve seniors in emergency preparedness. So we go out to all areas of Sonoma County, to senior housing communities, to senior centers, to community centers, and we give a really um, comprehensive two-part workshop about um, emergency preparedness, and we cover many topics. Today, we're going to do a mini slice of that. We're gonna focus on emergency plans and go bags. Um, but if you know of anyone who might want to get the full workshop, it is geared towards seniors, but of course, everyone can use this preparedness information. Um, but you can go to our website, which is the, on the bottom of their forms, emergencyprephelp.org, and on the events tab is a listing of our public events for our regular workshops, and you can register. They're free, so tell your senior friends and family members about it. Okay, we're gonna begin um, by talk, I'm gonna cover the subject of um, emergency plans and Lynn is gonna talk about the go bags. So first of all, why are we focusing on seniors? Um, you may not know it, but um, at least one in four people in Sonoma County is a senior, 60 or older, and that's growing. It's the largest um, segment of the population, largest growing segment of the population. Now while the entire population of the county um, is not necessarily growing that much, that bulge in the senior segment is. And so we need to take care of our seniors and make sure everyone is well prepared. Uh, Lynn and I and our third co-founder, Indigo, started this uh, because Indigo unfortunately was, a part, was um, involved in the 2015 Valley Fire and she lost her home in that fire. And in her um, dealing with that and her recovery, she actually became a case manager helping her community recover and just learned a lot about preparedness, recovery, and um, is, of course, very passionate about it. And Lynn and I um, have known Indigo for many years. The three of us have worked in the nonprofit industry together, and we've all been, we had been working with seniors at the time, and we just felt that it seemed like seniors weren't really taking the steps to get prepared, to be safe. And so we formed this organization to try to get out there and provide the education, provide some resources. Um, and uh, so that's, that's how we got into this um, service. So we're happy that you're here. And we're gonna start about why it's important to prepare. So I am much safer when I'm prepared. When I have a well thought out plan, um, I have it documented, I've practiced it, in the heat of an incident, I know what to do. I can go to that, and I'm going to be able to um, carry out my plan. So I'm much safer when I'm prepared. But also I'm safer when those around me are prepared. When those around me are also following their plan, and they know what to do, and they have resources, then we're not getting in each other's way, and we can all be prepared and do the best we can to get through whatever it is that's happening. First responders are safer when I'm prepared, and our neighbors are safer when, when um, you're calm and organized and prepared. So a lot of people are thinking that, you know, oh, it's okay, you know, a fireman will come knocking at my door and let me know when I have to go, or what have you, but you know what? The staff isn't that large at any one time, especially in the middle of the night when a lot of times these things happen. So you kind of have to take responsibility for yourself, and that helps the firefighters and the other first responders to be able to put attention to that disaster, whatever it is, and take care of it more quickly. And then peace of mind for myself, my family, and my community. Um, I've got a mother who lives about 15 miles away from me, a sister who's about 25 miles away, and another sister who's in Denver. And so, all of us are more um, calm and confident. We're not as worried when we know that each of us has done our, you know, our part to prepare. And especially my Denver sisters, like, okay, you're in California, what's going on over there? 
you know, why are you still living there? So um, we just, uh, it behooves us all to just be prepared and help each other to prepare. Okay, so I'm going to dive into some of the things about um, uh, getting your emergency, your personal emergency plan together. But a couple of highlights is knowing your zone. How many people are aware of what their uh, evacuation zone is? Okay, good. I see a good number of you. If you're not aware of what your evacuation zone is, then you can go to socoemergency.org. And you can click on Get Ready and then look for Know Your Zone or Find Your Zone. And it will take you to a place where you input your address and it will tell you what your evacuation zone is. So please, if you haven't done that, if you don't know what it is, please do that so you know your zone. And you can write it on that piece of paper in front of you, the My Emergency Plan. You want to commit that zone to memory so that you know um, when your area is being alerted about an incident. So the county didn't always have these different evacuation zones. But after the first big wildfire, the emergency management teams um, you know, realized that we need a better way to geographically, number one, pinpoint where the incident is and follow it and how it's moving and um, let the public know what's going on, but also how to prioritize how we put the message out to the public. What are the areas that are most affected? And so they went ahead and divided the area up into evacuation zones. Yes? Thank you. Yes, if you didn't hear that, um, outside there's a giant map of the evacuation zones for the county. So make sure to find what yours is and write it down. Okay, and then the other thing is um, make sure to know two alternate routes out of your home area. You might be someone who always turns right out of your street to, to do everything you do in your life, right? But in a disaster, you may not be able to turn right. There may be something going on there. That may be the direction of the disaster. So you need to go and figure out what's an alternate route I can do. Have at least two routes, maybe three, that you can get away from your area in the case of an evacuation. OK, so you can look at this My Plan form. This is designed to help you make your own personal emer uh, emergency plan that you can use in case of an evacuation or other emergency. So you'll want to take the time to fill these out. Um, we know that people are used to having information uh, digitally on your phone or what have you, but imagine if the cell tower goes out, right? Or if you're not able to get that information, you want to have it documented and you want to have a copy of this inside your go bag. So this is asking for um, your name, your zone, your meeting place, you probably want to have some kind of a plan with your friends, neighbors, buddies, family members as to where you might all meet up after a disaster of some kind. So you want to document that, make sure everybody knows that. If there is a particular buddy who's going to help you in an emergency and you've made that arrangement with them, you want to have their contact information written down. And then here's the places for your two um, places that you might evacuate to. So uh, a shelter, there will be shelters open, right, in, in the case of evacuations. But if you plan ahead of time, you might want to contact your cousin or your friend who lives two counties away or a county away, right, who's not going to be involved in that particular incident and just let them know, hey, if there's an incident, can I come and evacuate at your place for a few days? So make that plan now so everyone knows it and write that information down because in the moment that a disaster is happening, your brain might go to mush. So that's why we're really encouraging you to have this thought through, contact the people who need to you know, be in the know about it and have it written down with a copy in your go bag. Any questions on this? Okay. Okay, this is another page to document and keep it in your go bag along with that plan, emergency information form. So you're going to want to have documented your friends and relatives' um, contact information. Remember, you may not know their phone numbers anymore, right, because we use our cell phone. 
so I don't remember my mom's phone number, you know, I just call her with my cell phone. But you want it documented because you may not have access to that technology. Also, your medical data, your insurance information, your pets. Your pets kind of need to have their own plan as well. And if you come to one of our workshops, our comprehensive workshops, we have a pet expert there who talks through all of that. But, you know, you're going to want to know who the vet is and how to contact them. Some animals have special medication they need, so you would have a little go bag with their medication, for example. On the back side of that is the emergency, is the emergency information um, current medication document. So if you take medications or supplements, you want to have um, an extra set of those in your go bag, and you want to document what that is. Now, um, Indigo, who was in the, fire, the Valley Fire, it took a couple weeks before she could get, um, through the Red Cross, she could get a supply of her medications. And, but she hadn't noted what her uh, dosage was. She knew what she took, you know, she knew the medication name, but she didn't recall the dosage, and that made it even longer for her to get her supply. So just go ahead and document all of this and keep this in your go bag. Okay, so Lynn, too, is going to talk about go bags. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the emergency information form is for you to have so that you know how you can contact these people to get Well, or it's meant for you to have if you're going to need to, you know, um, find out information. Let's say your fire burned down or something, and you needed to contact your insurance company about it. You want to have that information. It would be for you to use in the um, situation. You, well, actually, it's recommended to have many copies of that. So you might have one or two other people that you want to have a copy of that, as well as having a copy in your go bag. Yes, you're right. And so there are um, locked document cases you can purchase. We've, we've had that question come up before, where you can have a combination lock, and you can have that stuff right with your go bag. So yeah, some people would want to have that. Um, you know, secure. So thank you. That's a good point. Okay, Lynn's going to talk about go bags. Thank you. So I wanted to s point out something on one of these forms. On my emergency plan, on the back side of that form is information on how to sign up for alerts and warnings. And I think there's more information in the booths out there, but just to let you know that there's comprehensive information on how to sign up for your local alerts and warnings, which you'll want to do. Yes, please. Yes, she's saying that you'll get a text message if you're in the area, but these things are not foolproof. So you want to sign up for two or three different ways to be connected because what if that system goes down and you, you know, you just want to make sure to sign up for your local alerts and warnings as well. And so the first item on the go bag checklist, um, where's that clicker, Lynn? That's okay, I could do this, can't I? Ha ha. <laughs> That's okay. I, I, um, so the first thing on the base, so I'm going to go over a basic emergency bag, uh, what's, what you should have in a basic bag. You're all going to get a bag at the end of this workshop with a lot of the items in that basic side. 
but go through it and make sure you have um, everything you need and start preparing more because you're going to get basic supplies, but you want to keep adding to it. So the first item is copy of important papers, which we were just talking about. You want to have a copy of your emergency plan and the emergency information form in your go bag, as well as have your relative or friend also have a copy so they know your plans. And then you also want to have copies of your important papers, like your will, insurance, uh, deed to your house, things like that. Uh, have a copy in the cloud, have a copy, like we said, locked in a, you could buy a lock pouch and have it in your go bag, and have a relative have that information as well, especially if you have a relative who's not in the area. So the next item on the list is a first aid kit. And you could get any of these items. I like to uh, recommend local stores like Friedman's or your local hardware store. But REI has this type of um, supplies as well as any big box store or you could go online. So this is a little first aid kit. They all have like a lot of band-aids in them and some alcohol swabs, but you'll want to personalize this for your go bag. So if you're someone who gets a lot of headaches, perhaps you'll want to have aspirin or ibuprofen in here. Um, if you're someone who gets stomach aches when you're nervous in an emergency, you'll put Tums or something like that in here as well. So personalize your little first aid kit. And just a side note, make sure to have a really robust first aid kit at home for in case there's power outages or earthquakes. So that's kind of just a side note about first aid kits. Next on the list is a flashlight. So you want to have a couple of flashlights, of course, around your home, but have a couple in your go bag, too. And they're all LED these days. The old-fashioned ones don't last long. You want an LED flashlight. We love headlamps. So headlamps are great. You want to have it at the top of your hairline, not down here like a hippie headband, but up here. And you want to get a headlamp that ratchets so that you could be hands-free and you could see where you're going and what you're looking at. If you have a pet, you'll want to have um, some red, they sell them with like a red cellophane or um, something that goes over it so you don't hurt your pet's eyes. A whistle. A whistle can be a life-saving device. If something happens and you need to call for help and you can't, you could blow your whistle. I wear mine if I'm going hiking by myself. Or sometimes if, if I have to walk around at night, I put one over my neck. It, it could, you know, um, stop someone from coming at me or something like that. But uh, whistles are always a good idea to have in your go bag. N95 masks, we're all familiar with these. They'll help if there's uh, a fire and it's smoky outside, and they'll also be good if you have to go to a, an evacuation shelter and the cooties are going around again, right? <laughs> so you want um, some masks. You also want to have a pair of disposable gloves, a couple pairs, and also some garbage bags. So it's important to stay clean and, and sanitary in emergencies. So if you need to gather garbage or whatever you're doing, you might need some gloves. Maybe you're tending to someone who has a wound. You'll need some, uh, some gloves. And garbage bags are good for many reasons. If you look up online what garbage bags can be used for, there's uh, many, many uses for garbage bags. They could be used to carry things, to haul things away. You could cut holes in them and make a poncho. But in a crisis situation, sometimes human waste becomes a problem. So you want to have these bags and extra gloves. They come in very handy. Our old friend hand sanitizer. Make sure to have some hand sanitizer. You Again, you want to stay clean. You want to make sure you're, uh, you're staying sanitized in an emergency. Also, hand sanitizer can be good if you get a cut or a, a little wound and you don't have any antiseptics. 
uh, you could use this to kill, some, to kill germs. It kills 90% of germs. You want to make sure not to have a scented one, though, unscented. A water bottle. Stay hydrated. It's really important to stay hydrated in any situation. I, I like this one because it has a flip top. I don't have to unscrew it and might lose the top. We like the kind that where the tops um, stay on. If you just have a regular water bottle, a generic one from the store, just make sure not to drop that cap. Keep the cap. Write your name on the water bottle. A mylar blanket. So it looks like this little piece of foil in a pouch. It's called a mylar blanket. And what it is, it's this like a big sheet of foil. And in an emergency, you could wrap it around. It could be life-saving in cold weather. It reflects your body heat to you. And so you want a mylar blanket. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, another item that's in a little pouch is a rain poncho. And so these are great, especially in rainy season. But also, you know, it could be cold whether it's winter or summer here in California. At night it gets cold. So it could help with that. It could, help, it could be a windbreaker. So you want to have a rain poncho in, in your emergency bag. You want to have a hygiene kit. So you want toothbrush, toothpaste. I have a uh, sensitivity to scents, so I want to have an unscented soap, some un unscented hand lotion, because you're using hand sanitizer a lot. You know, you need some hand lotion in here. Uh, for me, I need eye drops. So whatever is going to keep you comfortable and safe, you want a hygiene kit. Please. That's a great idea. So if you have a travel bag, she's saying, you could put that in your go bag. Uh, you want to have your medications. So this is a pill case. So you want to make sure that you have a supply of your medication in an emergency. And so what you can do, some people say, well, I can't have an extra week supply or, you know, it's hard to get more than a month at a time. So what you can do is you can have this filled and use it daily and then swap it out for the one in your go bag. And you could do that every week. So you're making sure to have current medication uh, as well as you have enough supplies. Um, I don't take medication, but I take supplements. So I'm vegetarian, so I need B vitamins. So you could use this for vitamins. You want to stay healthy in an emergency. You want to keep your your vigor up. <laughs> um, so you want to have snacks, of course. So some bars, maybe some jerky, some nuts, something that isn't going to spoil in your go bag. You might want to put a little bottle of whiskey for later on if you need it. <laughs> We've seen that. That's why I bring it up. We've seen um, someone have that in their go bag. So. One thing you want to do with your go bag is you want to check it twice a year. So for me, I do it when we change the clocks, the daylight savings. I check my go bag. You could do it at the equinox, the spring and fall equinox, whatever you'll remember. But you want to make sure, do you have current medication? Do you have um, spare glasses? So I need glasses to see. Every time I get a new prescription, I put the old prescription in my bag. So at least I'll be able to see something. So check your go bag twice a year. Also, you want to keep your go bag in the same place every time. You don't want to move it from the closet to the garage to under the bed. Keep your go bag in the same place every time so that you know where it is when you're ready, when you need to go. 
And we recommend that you go at the warning. Don't wait for the order. So we recommend that at our senior workshops because it takes longer for older adults to get going, to make sure they're ready. But everybody should really just leave at the warning. Worst comes to worst, you go to a couple towns over, you have tea, and you come back and, it, and it's fine. So we recommend that. Did I see a hand? Yeah, please. Yes. Oh, yeah, so she's saying you should keep your go bag by your door, but what if you don't have uh, a lot of space? You have to just keep it where you can, as, as close as you can, but you know, you don't want it like right in the middle of your living room. So <laughs> that's why I don't have a closet in my front door. So wherever you can, where you, just where you know it is. So you don't want it in the back of the closet. So yes, uh, yes, please. Yeah, so exactly. Thank you for bringing that up. Mm. Okay, so a couple things. One thing he said, which I usually say at our workshops, is your go bag is your best friend in any emergency. So whether it's an earthquake, a power outage, or an evacuation. So yes, your uh, bag is your best friend in any emergency. After an earthquake, you're going to grab your go bag. Another thing he was saying was, what about water purifier? That's a great thing to add to your go bag. We don't have it on the list, but I have one in my go bag. It's like a straw that you could use that they sell, again, at any um, hiking or out, outdoor stores like REI or Dick's. Um, yeah, that, that's a great idea to add to your go bag. And so that's why you could see on the form there's a whole, there's room for you to add what you um, think is best for an emergency. I do like that. I might add it to our list. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay, I want to talk about the two highlighted items. So you want to have some cash in small bills. Because in a crisis situation, you don't know um, the cash registers could go down, ATMs could go down. So you want to have some cash so that you could buy things without having to get change. So fives and tens, nothing over a 20, a bunch of singles. Um, because as I said, yeah, ATMs could go down, cash registers can go down. Make sure to have your car at least half a tank full because especially in um, fire season you definitely want to make sure you're not in a line at a gas station so always have your tank at least half full an emergency radio flashlight so that's what this is it's called an emergency radio flashlight they have them um, Again, at any of the stores I've mentioned, or on, I bought this one online, I think it was $40. Um, that small red one's good as well. You want to get one that does many things, okay? So it ha this one has a very strong light. It has another flashlight here. I could charge my phone. If, so I, I charge up my um, emergency radio every month. It actually holds a charge pretty well. Like I usually, it usually holds a really good charge. But let's say it ran out of charge. This one, ha you want one that you could um, charge this way as well. And also, it has a little solar panel on the top. This one, so you could charge a little bit that way as well. But what this has is something called the weather band. So it has. AM and FM, but it also has the weather band that only has information on local weather, local emergencies. You won't run into talk radio. You won't run into Taylor Swift or Beyonce. It just has uh, local important information for you. 
So uh, definitely, you have to get one with weather band, and we highly recommend you get one of these. Some other items um, that you could put in your emergency bag, you could get some hand warmers if you tend to get um, cold feet, cold hands. It's something, um, you shake them up, or you bend them like that, and they become warm. And you could put them in your socks or in your uh, gloves. This is a little multi-tool that has a little scissor or a little knife. But a Swiss Army knife would be great if you could have one of those. They're so handy in so many different situations. And a, a power bank or battery bank to charge your uh, technology is a great idea to put in your go bag. So we, um, again, go home and personalize your go bag. Go down the list that we gave you. Start adding items in. You want to make sure you could manage your bag in an emergency. So you don't want to put too much in there. Um, another thing we recommend, so I have a lot of things in my go bag, but of course I'm not going to put everything in there that I use daily, but that I want to grab. But in an emergency, I'm going to be panicking. So what I want everyone to do is write five items on a little sticky note and put it on your refrigerator with the five items you're going to grab in an emergency. You're going to grab your go bag. For me, I have my laptop on the list. I have these little por uh, porcelain swans that were my mother's that are so dear to me. So that's on my list. And of course, my Grateful Dead ticket stubs. <laughs> that's me. So yeah, make a, a list of five items and put it on the fridge. Um, we also recommend if you can't, so we're going to, everyone's going to get one of these great bags from um, the Santa Rosa Fire Department. And I just want to thank them for having us here. And they're going to be giving every one of you these bags. So real uh, grateful for them. But not everyone can manage all their stuff in a go bag. We have aches and pains as we get older. So you might want to have um, a shopping cart or um, a wheelie bag, something. But again, not too much. It's just stuff. You're not going to take everything. You're going to save your life. You're going to save your pets. Yes, please. Okay, yeah, yeah, so she has, she's recommending a, t a little tent or a tarp, and you could outfit your car with all these things if you have, that's a good idea, or if a little tarp might fit in your go bag, uh, but she's saying, yeah, to have like a, a wheelie cart that you could affix a backpack on top of it and, and get out with those things. Um, anything else? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. That's great. So what she's saying is you have, um, you can make a list if I have five minutes to evacuate, if I have 10 minutes, if I have half an hour to evacuate. And so you'll have a list of things that you, that are more and more, or less and less imp important, but you want to grab if you can. But again, leave at the warning. Don't wait for the order, please, because it just takes too much time. There'll be too many people on the road. But yes, that's a great suggestion. Yes. Oh, okay. So. That's great. 
She's recommending perhaps instead of your laptop to have everything in on a hard drive and you could grab that. Another thing you could do is have a flash drive with important information on it. It's just, it's so easy to, to take. Great. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. So, yeah, it's a little extreme, but if you've been through a fire and lost everything, maybe you're a little more extreme. But she's saying that her neighbor takes their ar some artwork and puts it in a storage unit near the freeway. And so they swap out the art probably in their house for that so that they don't lose everything. That's an idea. People um, prepare at different levels. So it's a process. So I just want to uh, remind everybody, Emergency Prep Help is a nonprofit. We prepare seniors across the county. We've prepared over 1,400 seniors so far, but there's over 140,000 in Sonoma County. So we're going to low-income housing, to mobile home parks, to senior centers. We want to make sure seniors are prepared. So if you're interested, um, we could use your support. If you want to volunteer, if you want to give us a donation, just getting the word out, there are brochures. You have our website. You could download our forms from our website. So we're going to give out go bags. Come talk to me after. I'm happy to stand up here for questions. There are go bags yeah, that uh, Lynn um, and Francine are going to pull them out. Take only one bag per person. And um, yeah, I see your hand, but it's, it's late, so I want to let people out. But come, t come talk to me if you'd like. <laughs> oh, map, Meet Your Neighbor or Map Your Neighbor is an organization you could look up. 